We'll get to that in a minute because earlier, uh, overnight, Ollie Gordon, Oklahoma State Heisman Trophy candidate, record-breaking running back, uh, coming back for Oklahoma State. This is the story that came down late yesterday. Actually, Chris Williams used to work in the market that he was stopped for a DUI. And I've had even some who watch this show text me about what should happen. How, how many games should he be suspended? And I, I don't know if that's because you want him to be suspended or what. What does Oklahoma State do here? Well, I, I think this this therein lies the problem with major college athletics and the way that they have to adjudicate punishment right now in that, you know, if this is the NFL, you know, it go to the disciplinary council and they, you know, Roger Goodell would, you know, kind of dole things out uh, because he's the commissioner. Uh, they need a commissioner so that way, you know, that you can take yourself out of it because, you know, there's been many situations. Heck, we just talked about the time I – I, I, you know, I screwed Josh Gordon and Willie Jefferson out of a half by, by telling, uh, you know, Ken Starr about what their punishment was. So uh, people, coaches all do these in different ways. And no, I mean, they're, you know, all these things are kind of like snowflakes. No two are exactly the right, uh, the same, but I mean, I, I think he probably deserves some sort of suspension. I mean, just like Trevor Etienne at, at, at Georgia probably deserves a suspension for getting a DUI. Will but, this be a suspension, or do you think a bunch of gassers? Uh, and that's again, that's that's the thing. That's why I think this needs to be taken kind of out of the school's hands because that way too often, if you leave it up to, you know, uh, tell Dupont to not dump chemicals in the water, but then put them in charge of not dumping chemicals in the water, what are they going to do? Yeah, they'll just do it a little bit less. Craig, take it out of their hands in what way? Like commissioner, like you know, have the commissioner dole out punishments and things like that For all, wait a minute the commissioner your mark no commit that's why i say we need a commissioner that's oh, why i think okay. you need to take it out of school's hands i understand that's not the reality of the situation yeah. but if you want fair punishment across the board you can't leave up leave it up to each individual school some of them will go way beyond the pale for it because they're worried about what people will say and then others will be like well what are you gonna do to me yeah a half uh, kyle visser and craig you respond he should not be suspended that's why we have a legal system Gundy can implement in-house punishment that is no one's business. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know how they should handle it, really. I don't have a super strong opinion on that. I do think he deserves a punishment of some sort. Um, I also know that coaches don't always take this very seriously, and we only take it seriously and really uh, get, get serious about it when something horrific happens. So it's like, oh, well, nothing bad happened, so let's not uh, worry about it too much. Um, you know, glad everybody's safe. Hopefully it's not as bad as it looks, and uh, I guess they're going to continue to investigate. Uh, it was suspicion of DUI and a couple of other things. So, you know, they'll have their lawyers or Ollie's lawyers or whoever will look into that and, and get down to the bottom of it and go through that process. Um, but, yeah, I don't have, like, some Stephen A. Smith hot take of, you know, he should be suspended for the rest of the year or anything crazy like that. I don't know enough of the details, and i um, not going to just consider him – full-blown guilty based on what I have read so far. Doesn't look good. It's not a good look for Ollie Gordon. Let's no. start there. It's a bad look for him. It's uh, not a great way to start to turn the corner into the regular season of you know being the reigning Doak Walker award winner and uh, having some Heisman love, as you mentioned, and, and here he is getting popped for uh, suspicion of DUI. So uh, hopefully this wakes him up a little bit, that he's not in a position where he needs to be making mistakes like that. And I know we see NFL players, you know, hey, you've got a whole system designed to allow you to not drink and drive, and there's plenty of guys that do it anyways. And so I know that's just the, the mindset of people in general. It's like, no, I can drive, but hopefully Ollie Gordon does a little bit of a, a pause and that from now on because he can ill afford now to, to have another thing because then that becomes a chain of things. So it's a mistake. Luckily, no one was hurt. Oklahoma State will handle it however they choose to. I'm sure we will either notice he gets suspended for a half which is probably what would end up happening against, like, Tulsa or something. Uh, I don't know the schedule off the top of my head. Uh, and then, you know, I'm sure he'll run a bunch of gassers, and we'll hear that. That's typically what these things are, a half suspension, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, whatever that may entail. But, yeah, I just my, – my biggest takeaway is that's a mistake. Uh, we'll learn more about it, and, um, you know, he'll – be punished however he's punished but i hope we just don't hear anything like this again from him for a very long time if, if ever they open up with south dakota state uh is their opening game uh you think you'll be at big 12 media days next week no okay i get why you think that way or that would be the answer but wouldn't it also be good for him to also yeah but do colleges think that no, no, no. not a one of them wouldn't you like to wouldn't that be Look, I, I, every single school what every yeah. single one 
Every single one is afraid of that. All of them. 100% of schools are afraid of having the person sit up in front of the microphone and take responsibility. Greg? Especially in a setting like that where you'd okay. have to do it seven and times. I, and he, in 99% of them, you're right, that, that yeah. he's probably not going to be there. Well, finish your thought. You would like what? Well, no, I, I just think it would be different. Different. It, it would be. Uh, it would be. To show some ballsy. accountability, but yeah. his attorney may not let him talk. Yeah. I yeah, mean, and I don't think we're there to talk to him about his DUI well, if suspicion. if he's there, yeah. he has to. He has right, to so I don't it, think yeah. that's why we care to talk to him. It's yeah. not, we're not the judge and jury here. You know, we're, we're reading a headline about what he got popped for, the cops. And Ollie Gordon's legal representation will figure out the actual legal stuff. And, and that's that's up for them to, to figure all out. But, you know, we're just reading a report. So, yeah, I, I don't have any inch. I had plenty of interest in talking to Ollie Gordon prior oh, to this. Too. I have no interest in talking to him because he got a DUI. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would think it'd probably be wiser for them to not have him there uh, just to avoid – Everybody bringing this up because you obviously have to bring it up because it just happened like days prior to him getting there. Um, so maybe to, to get around that and, and to not just dwell on it, you you don't have him there. Um, that you know is not great though because that's obviously your best player and one of the faces of the league. So um, I understand where you're coming from, but I mean it's not really the media's job to provide the accountability no, for Ollie Gordon. No, no. So if he's there, he would have questions. He doesn't have to answer many of them. It might help just kind of clear that. And and but but he's probably not going to be there. I wonder if in fact he has another great year. Will someone with a Heisman vote use that against him? I mean, do they use it against all the Georgia guys? Uh, do they use it against the other players well, around they, college football? People, and I'm not trying I to. I think some used it against Caleb Williams because his fingernails were painted. Okay, well, yeah. if they're going to do that, then I'm sure there'll be some guy somewhere, some girl somewhere that has a Heisman vote. That I guess if they just really want to stick it to Ollie Gordon, they'll take away the vote they would have given him otherwise. I don't know. I think that's an on the field award. And uh, I understand that there's off-the-field perceptions that matter to some extent as well, but I, I don't think the Heisman Trust is also the holier-than-thou group that needs to be uh, determining no. you know, those types of things either necessarily. They're their voting body for that matter. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm sure somewhere, but I don't think that there would be enough of a revolt of – Ollie Gordon had a suspicion of DUI prior to the season. He was clearly the best player in the world this year, but we're going to hold that against him yeah. and stick it to him. If somebody wants to be like that, then, yeah. I mean, well, you know. Well, there's hundreds of voters, and so I'm sure somebody I, will. I think that's also part of the reason that the Heisman Committee has so many voters so that you can maybe weed out the, well, this guy's got fingernails, and this guy had – Made a mistake. Well, I hope he has fingernails. But, but I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, this guy, this guy, oh, this guy. This, there are some that yeah. won't vote outside of their region. Yeah, won't vote outside of their or region. They, or, or they hate Notre Dame. Yeah. Or, yeah, I don't, I don't like the way this guy is on Twitter yeah. or things like that. Which, which has nothing to do with the fact that he might be the best college football player in the yeah. country. Yeah, like all, like that's what you're voting on. You're not voting on the dude that you want to have a beer with the most. You're voting on the guy who's the best football player. Let's put it this way: Ollie Gordon, go earn your way to New York, and then we can have the conversation yeah, yeah. about yeah. whether this hurts you. But uh, you're not there yet, and and no nowhere close nobody is right now so yeah go right. ahead and earn that and then we can have that conversation and not only go out and earn that but keep your nose clean that entire time until then and uh show some you know uh i don't know remorse or you know what i mean something along those lines or just go keep your head down and work and clear this all up and, and go about your way and then we'll yeah revisit that in december when the actual votes start to roll in but beyond that yeah i don't, I don't think there's I mean, I know we, we have fun with Georgia, and, and theirs was not to – I don't want to – see, this is the whole thing. You go down, like, I don't want to start comparing DUI cases. Some people but, have in the, cha in the chat room. I know, uh, but, like, you know, for example, Georgia, like, a, a person died. Yeah. like and, and so, you know, I don't want to go down that road, but he made a mistake. He needs to own up to it. I'm sure he's already doing that. Oklahoma State will handle it. And I'm sure people have opinions on that because we will take notice of whether he's suspended or not. But – I don't know enough to sit here and, and act like I'm God Almighty and I, you know, I'm determining what Ollie Gordon I, yeah, should feel like. I wonder like or how anything. many people who are trying to like give him a, a suspension or like crucify him. They themselves have their own well, skeletons uh, in their own which, closet, which is but which, doesn't mean he's not wrong because he obviously which, made a terrible mistake. Which is why I do think that that most of these things shouldn't really be left up to the schools because you know it it would be, it's going to be different across the board. But right now, I'm, there's no choice. There's no choice. I think that having a a somewhat impartial third party, you know, look at these things because then they'll have to be in charge of looking at the the kid from. 
Tech will get a DUI, or the kid from Baylor, or the kid from T. Like, yeah, no, like this is this is the other thing that's that is you know silly about college football fandom. You know, there are tons of fans from other schools who are like they would never at, at our school. See, like, oh, no, they have, here, they will. I'm going to yeah. read this from Wet Blanket. We know he's an Oklahoma State fan, but here's what I don't like when maybe someone, a player from the program you like, does something silly, stupid, and then you go, well, well yeah, what about like you go, well, Oklahoma had three players, Joe. Wet blanket, it doesn't matter what Oklahoma's had. It's about Oklahoma State and how they handle Ali Gordon, and I hope that they handle it well, and I hope he does too, and everybody can move on. Because we can do the yeah, but game with anything in life. Now, Big 12 preseason poll. Utah and Kansas State 1-2. and two. Uh, And uh, the voting was really close. 21st place votes for Utah, 19th for K-State. Then there's Oklahoma State, KU, Arizona, you can see down the list, I think one through nine, maybe with a couple of little flips is exactly the way I went. And then TCU, Colorado, Baylor, Brigham, all of BYU. I, this is very close to, I think, how I went. That's the vote. And 80, I think it was 65% have had either Utah one or, or K-State one or two, one or the other. But this, to me, when I saw this, I didn't go, oh, my God, I thought this all made sense. Yeah, um, I had, I think, pretty much the same top seven, um, and maybe some differences uh, as far as the middle goes, but pretty much all the same grouping of teams, same for the bottom. I, I had BYU, I think, lower um, by a spot or two, um, and then, you know, all the rest of it, though, looks about the same as what I had. I mean, maybe, maybe I had, like, West Virginia and Tech flipped, I think. But, I mean, that's very slight differences that when you get down to like seven, eight, nine are, are really not that great of differences. So, yeah, this aligns with – I know what my feelings are. Uh, and, I, and if they align with yours, then I think we're all pretty much in the same boat. I don't think there's anything truly shocking here. I do wonder, um, Arizona State, I, I sort of felt – because I think I had them at dead last uh, because of their schedule – um, I wasn't looking at that. One thing I didn't realize, this is something I, I thought at the time, and then I didn't want to say it right afterwards because then it made it sound like I was like squirreling away from my own picks, but I looked at it for the entire season. I didn't look at just the Big 12 games. So when you're actually looking at the Big 12 records, those are going to be different than your season records. So mine was like based on full like 12-game schedule, but the three non-cons don't matter. Yeah. And so I, I probably need to readjust that, but I think it still comes out pretty much the same way. Um, but it would flip perhaps like my 16th and 15th because the non-cons are, are different. You know what I mean? But that's that's pretty much what I had. I think um, everybody's vibing the same way. Um, Arizona, we all feel like it's going to be pretty good. We're just not – most of us are ready to say, yeah, they're going to be like one or two. Um, they're better than Kansas State or Utah. Oklahoma State getting a bit more love here than they've, you know, maybe gotten elsewhere uh, where they're more like four, five, six. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty solid list, and I think that's, you know, um, uh, about where my mind's been as far as this well, league goes. My, my top, like – if you broke it off into like sections of it, yep. I have the top four are the same teams in different order. Okay. So um, from five to 10 are the same teams in slightly different order. And honestly, between six and 10, they might all have the same record. I don't think people quite understand in a 16 team league where not everybody plays each other, how many teams, it could be 5 to 12, have almost the same record. Like 7, 5, 6, 6, 8, 4. Yeah, you, it's you all yeah. going to be right there. Like yeah. you could have four teams at 8 and 4 easily because they don't cross paths. Uh, and then from 11 down, mine is considerably a bit more jumbled. I have Houston a lot higher because I, I trust really Fritz. I have Colorado a little lower. Um you know, just because I, I got to see it. I have BYU lower. Uh, I have Cincinnati at the bottom. You know, I, I, I guess I like Kenny Dillingham more than Scott, Scott Satterfield. I don't know. So, Well, I, wet blanket, again, Oklahoma State, was mm -hmm. saying that uh, you, all of you on 365 Sports lowballed Oklahoma State. Now, I got a question. For you. I had them three. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Where they I, are. Yeah. I had them four. I had them four. What did you have them, Craig? I just said I had them at three. Okay, so I don't know what lowballing would be when we have them about where exactly 50 or so other people had them end. Like, there may be some that had them. A, a, in fact, some of them had ranked number one. 
So it, it's just funny to watch the sensitivity when the, the low ball, when we had them right where they ended up, is exactly the evidence that I have in front of me with my ballot and the ballots that you guys have as well. Now, the Big 12 all first team, football team, Offensive player and defensive players of the year are both from Colorado. Not a surprise, Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, although you could insert other names there. Newcomer of the year is K.J. Jefferson. I think we could just debate or you digest whatever those particular what you call superlatives, and we could talk about that all day because the options are there. The newcomer, not quite as much. I no, um I, I think where my the difference in my offense uh, on that, like I had some wide receivers that were different. Uh, my offensive line was a little bit different because even though I know they just put OL, I refuse. I, I, yeah. I, I'm a conscientious objector yep. because I would like to create, if I'm going to create the all Big 12 team, I'm going to create one that can function. That when you go up against the all SEC team or the all pack, or I'm sorry, that doesn't exist anymore, or the all uh, Big Ten or all ACC team, if we were going to play that fictional matchup, that we would have a center and two guards and two tackles. Because, and I don't know why the Big 12 won't do this, because it's disrespectful to all the positions collectively. What if the Big 12 has a year where they don't have any good tackles? Or like, but they have, you know, um, but you're going to, or don't have any good centers, but you have to still put a center there. You know, it, it just... Okay, well, we won't put a center. Well, no, there's got to be a best center. There's got to be a best guard. Hell, you made me pick a fullback, for God's sakes. You won't make me let a pick mm, a center? Yeah. No, 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 okay, no. let me ask you a question on newcomer. Would any of the players from the incoming schools be considered a newcomer? No. Uh, okay, all right. Okay. No. Yeah. Because otherwise, it would be a different answer. Obviously, you'd have the guys who were both the offense and defensive players of the year or Fafita – Etc. who would be a part of that mix. Yeah, that's not the spirit of what a newcomer of the year is. No. So, no, I think that that would be dumb. Um, and it'd be, you know, the SEC's like, here's uh, Nick Anderson from Oklahoma's the newcomer. I think that'd be silly. So, no. Um, um, could you pop that back up there? Sorry, Garrett. If you can't, that's that's fine. But, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, those are logical choices. Uh, Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter. I mean, there's obviously an argument that could be made for quarterback, but Shador is a solid argument. And so uh, I have no issues uh, there. Uh, if you picked anybody else, you can have an argument, and Shador would be part of that argument. So he very well may be the best quarterback in the league. Uh, Ollie Gordon and Taj Brooks, you know, I know there's other guys that are good, but I think those are, are two pretty clearly the top producing backs that are coming back and you know, I didn't have I didn't have Taj I had Devin Neal and okay yeah so but yeah um but Taj Brooks had a great year yeah. so there's I yeah. think that he'd be my number two guy right there with Ollie Gordon um you know Tet McMillan Kobe Hudson Jaden Higgins Brendan Presley those guys all make sense uh Brent Keithy at tight end I think you know he's obviously a guy coming back from injury but I, I do think that that's a logical choice offensive line there's just so many guys it's kind of hard to to feel like I have a good grasp on if there's a, a major slight I don't feel like I see one but I'm sure if I search the comments uh, but I don't really have much of a, a comment on that myself and uh you know defensively just looking that over as well I think there's some good players to carry out Davis's yep. uh, Travis Hunter obviously you, you mentioned him's getting a lot of love um but, yeah, some new faces that I think are going to be uh, very interesting to track. Dante Corleone's on here, but we don't even know if he's going to play this year. Yeah, but the vote, obviously, right. to let everyone know, we did that like two weeks ago. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something that's obviously not going to turn out to be the same way. But yeah, Kobe Bryant being back, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I don't know about uh, – uh, let's see here. Uh, Jack Bowmeister, I, I didn't look at the punting all that in-depth, so – um, I'll just entrust that everybody got that right and that he's the best punter in the league. Special teams, not really my, you know, my area of focus too much on these teams. And so uh, there's just a new name to the league that uh, we're all going to be seeing more of. And uh, I don't feel like there's really anything egregious. And I'm sure if there is, somebody will let us know, and I'll be more than happy to talk well, about yeah. it. But this, this lines up, I think, pretty much yeah. with uh, most people's team. And it's also the mixture of four new schools where you had to kind of do a little bit of homework. I did not do an all-first team. Uh I did not do that. I didn't have time to get it in by the time we needed to. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure that there's some that are, there's somebody that's, that may be an omission. And if you could see that, let us know uh, in the chat room. I, I, I did, and my defensive player of the year was, was Travis Hunter, even though I, I think I entered it in the wrong line. Um, 
But Ollie Gordon was my offensive player of the year. Um, I did have Devin Neal over Taj Brooks. And part of the reason was I thought that instead of giving me a fullback, I, I, like, I just had in my head they were going to give me three running backs. And, you know, so I there's only two in the league, and the one from Iowa State got it. The other one is from, from Oklahoma State, and that was kind of a coin flip. My quarterback was Avery Johnson because I think he's, he's going to be – have more wins at the end of the year, uh, quite frankly. And that's why I picked him over Shadur, even though Shadur. Well, you would have picked him over Shadur, Cam Rising, and Fafita. Yeah, I okay. did. That's why I picked him, you know, and, and I picked Avery Johnson. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but, um, you know, I did I did throw in LeJonte Wester as wide receiver at Colorado because I think he's going to have a million receptions this year. Um, and Brent Keithy was my tight end, and I went – Position specific. They also do that on the defensive line, which irritates me too. Because know. you know, just let's get precision specific. And well, you know what you should. Well, here's do. the thing about doing that, though. I'm sitting here. I'm doing looking at Baylor's defense last night. I'm like, okay, is this guy a linebacker or is he a yeah. defensive end? Yeah. Is this guy a safety or is he a star or is he a corner or is he an outside linebacker or is? So I know what you're saying, but it's not like football where it's like weak side linebacker, middle linebacker, yeah. Sam linebacker, corner, corner, safety. Like it's like stars and jacks and, you know, That's bucks. Okay. And, yeah. was, okay. was R.J. Yeah. Harvey involved in the discussion at running back at all? No, well, I don't because think he's so. going to be for me. Well, yeah. I think he's really good, but, but he's not the only one on his yeah, team for yeah, one. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the things. I saw this and I said this on Twitter. I don't get on there as much. Believe it, like a one tenth of a, when someone was like, "Well, I would have had so and so." The rules are there's two running backs, so you can name five, but you got to only pick two. So you can't you can't have four. Who then comes off if you take yeah. off Gordon? Or Taj Brooks, and, yeah. and and people will have somebody yeah. that they will lean, uh, lean on and take one of those off, or both. Okay, I would like to retract my previous statement on defense based on what you just said because it makes so much sense. So defense has to kind of just be generic, but offense can't be. There's not right. like again, there's not five guys who snap the ball. I just it's, think with that, it's hard for yeah, people right to tackle, separate yeah. who the sixteen left guards are and the 16 and they you know and i think even if it was 10 or 12 teams i mean maybe that would make it easier but get into the specifics and then there's guys that move around positions so i think they try to keep it generic just to keep All it right. simple but yeah like it uh, defensively there's guys that are just so many hybrid positions now that it's you kind of have to go generic to to just lump them into a category versus guys who maybe you're listed as corner but he's as much a outside linebacker slash safety slash corner type of a position as he is just a regular corner. They so, yeah. do have five defensive backs. You yeah. know, it's not yeah. quarterback or safety. Yeah. Also, some teams run a three-man front. Some teams run two tackles and two ends. And then, you know, again. So, let's go. If you look at the first and second team, I did a little of this. Five teams had nobody. Baylor, Arizona State, Houston, TCU, and Kansas State. Yeah, Kansas State was a, a bit of a shocker to me, but Chris Kleiman probably loves it. Oh no, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure he woke up this morning, saw it, was mad for ten minutes, and then went, "Oh, <laughs> put, put, put it up." And now, <laughs> Oklahoma State had six, Arizona had five, and then there's uh, Colorado, Iowa State, Utah, all with three. Texas Tech, UCF, Cincinnati, KU with two, and then West Virginia. And BYU each had one. Oh, but by the way, um, Oklahoma, like when it came to offensive line, this made it really hard to vote for because on four of the five positions, you could make an argument that Oklahoma State is the best guy. They have a very good offensive line. And so, um, you know, that, that would have made Oklahoma State like dominate the team because... Well, they have two of the five. They have two of the yeah. five, and you could honestly have put four of the five on there in consideration for the best ones. Part of the reason that Kansas State doesn't have any offensive linemen on the list is they lost their three best ones to the draft last year mm. So, uh, or to the NFL. So we'll see, you know. The thing uh, preventing everybody from going in all in on Oklahoma State is a little bit of a question about their defense, but it's mostly that nobody trusts Alan Bowman. Nobody thinks he's really that great. I mean, let's let's just cut through the, the noise. Uh, Alan Bowman, if that was Avery Johnson, they would be like the runaway pick to win the league probably this year. Now, Utah would still get some love, I'm sure, but I think – for most people, why is Oklahoma State not getting enough love? They've got receivers, and they've got the O-line, and they've got the running back back, and they've got a bunch of guys on defense. I think it's just that people look around and they see better quarterbacks uh, on other teams. And so I think it's it's a year for Alan Bowman to go – uh, like they did last year, go prove a lot of people wrong. Now, he wasn't the driving factor in them proving people wrong, but he had his moments. He also had some moments where he hurt them. So I think that their ceiling is going to be 
um, as high as Alan Bowman can can make it and how high he can take it. But I think that's really what prevents Oklahoma State from having people go all in on them because there's a lot to like about the team other than that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just that's my two cents on the Cowboys. Um, surprised that K State doesn't have anybody, but then again, I mean they're their best candidates at running back. Like it's a crowded room at quarterback. It's a crowded room. Um, you know, I'm sure maybe there's like a defensive end or something I'm not thinking of, uh, but. You know, I there's 16 teams. There's a lot of guys that have to beat out. And, yeah, I'm sure Chris Kleiman actually loves the fact that they don't have anybody uh, mentioned. It is surprising, though, that they don't have a single player on here. So, by all means, K-State fans, uh, you know, show us your, your picks for who you think should be on there. And if it's Avery Johnson, like – that's that's fine and that's understandable. That's not really where we're looking here. We're looking for maybe somebody who's a bit more obvious because Avery Johnson's not the quarterback because there's just a bunch of other quarterbacks that are good. Uh, Dylan Edwards isn't the top running back because there's a bunch of other proven running backs that are good. But is there somebody he, that's he's a... He's not even the starter in Colorado, right? Giddens? Dylan Edwards is at Kansas State. Okay. Where's Giddens? Giddens at Kansas State. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you said so, Colorado. Oh, I'm he sorry. He was in Colorado. Sorry. Yeah, he was. No, no they, yeah, they yeah, have, they'll Ed, be splitting like the guys at UCF. Those two yeah, will be splitting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, like, if you want to put somebody out there that you think is like, like, those guys are not there for obvious reasons because it's crowded. But if there's, like, an outside linebacker that everybody's whiffing on, by all means, whatever school it is, like, tell us who the obvious egregious errors are because there are a lot of names to pour through, and um, you can make arguments for why, but maybe there is there is an oversight, although based on what we've seen, I, I think, you know, it's about what you'd expect from a preseason team. It's I, I love it when we get – I'm not sure I like it when we vote for them, but I do love it when it comes out because it's something else to chew on. Remember, just, uh, what, a month or so from now, you will also end up with the AP and the coaches poll that comes out, and we can all discuss that too. Yeah. Uh, uh, Brett Bingham, Craig Smoke, last year uh, was also his first year running Oklahoma State's offense. Hopefully, he's able to improve from last year's appearance, uh, experience, and the staff provide him options and advice. Does he need to be just a bus driver? Because that's not his I, style. Basically, I, yeah. I don't. I don't think that the issue with Alan Bowman is the uh, is the system. I think it's that his ability is capped, in that. You know, I don't know if he can throw them to wins if Ollie Gordon's not having a great day. That's that's my question. In a league that's going to be uh, very, very tough this year. So I do think there is – I mean, yeah, it's very fair to point out that it's a first year in an offense. That matters. Yeah. Like, that matters whoever you are, that you're in a different system. So, yeah, he should be much more comfortable in that system, uh, much more knowledgeable, should be, um, you know, just uh, like, like the back of his hand. He should know it all too well and uh, should – you know, definitely be better in that regard. But the actual skill level, yeah, I think is the question mark. And can he not turn over the football? Can he make big-time throws in big-time situations? I think those are – he's just not a star. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just not. And that's fine because most of the quarterbacks in this league and most of the quarterbacks in college football are not stars. So that's not a knock. It's just that he's not Shador Sanders. He doesn't have the upside of Avery Johnson. You know, he's not that level of talent – but he's plenty good to get into the Big 12 championship game and and just kind of do his thing. And so, yeah, I don't think he's going to be the guy that, like, leads you to the promised land on, you know, everybody get on his back. But I do think he's good enough to get you pretty deep. Um, But, yeah, being in a a system for another year should only help. But I just think that he's kind of at his ceiling as far as his actual skill level goes at this point in his career when you're talking – seven years deep in the college game. I just think we've kind of seen what you have to offer as far as your physical attributes and and your skill level. So I think that's where a lot of people are coming from. Man, before he got hurt at Tech, he was putting up crazy numbers. Remember that when he was at Tech, Mm slinging it around everywhere? Of course, a lot of time quarterbacks at Tech have done that. Well, and part of the reason I voted them fourth was not just because of my, you know, lack of confidence in his overall skill, given the fact that the other Teams in the top four all have better quarterbacks than him, at least, at least skill wise. Um, and was that I'm not convinced that he's going to go through two seasons in a row of being completely healthy because that's never happened in his life. Yeah, I mean that's fair, but he just yeah. did it last year. Yeah. You know, basically, I'm more worried about the fact that he threw 15 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's that's what bothers me is that he nearly had 50-50 on touchdowns and, and ints, even though they didn't throw the ball a ton. So. 
I, I think that's, you know, it's a combination of factors, but Alan Bowman is the reason why Oklahoma State, I, I, I don't even want to say that because it sounds like some like big hot take, so I don't even want to make it like that, but I, I think that's, like I said a few moments ago, that's probably what prevents people from going further with their Oklahoma State selection is just not feeling like maybe they have that star at that position. All right, uh, there we go with that. Now, 